Hi, this is Marsha Kane, and welcome to The Steering Wheel. Tonight, my guests are Ken Marshall and Dave Burnham from the Adirondack Motor Enthusiast Club. And before we get to talking with these guys and their ace, ice racing, I'm going to give you the rundown on the uh, local clubs. And to begin with, we have the Adirondack Motor Enthusiast Club. And they meet the second Monday of the month at 8 o'clock at Poor John's Restaurant on Route 50 in Burnt Hills. The Albany Rod and Customs Club meets the second Wednesday of the month, and you can call 456-1019 for more information. The Adirondack Triumph Association meets the last Tuesday of every month, and you can call 674-5035 for the time and the place. The Alfa Romeo Owners Club meets the second Wednesday of the month, and you can call 346-5411 for the time and the place. The BMW Car Club meets the first Tuesday of the month at 8 o'clock at the Howard Johnson's in Stuyvesant Plaza in Albany. The Capital District Chevy Club meets the first Thursday of the month at 7.30 at the Howard Johnson's on Route 7 in Latham. And Empire Motorsports Car Club meets the third Thursday of the month at 8 o'clock at Holmes and Watson's uh, in Troy. The Mohawk Hudson Region of the Sports Car Club of America meets the first Wednesday of the month at 7.30 at the Ramada Inn on Western Avenue in Albany. The Porsche Club of America meets the third Tuesday of the month at 8 o'clock at the Albany Motor Inn, Route 9W South, and that's a half a mile south of Exit 23 in Albany. The Trans Am Z28 Enthusiast Club meets the second Tuesday of the month at 7.30 at Carms on Freeman's Bridge Road in Scotia. The Vets in Perfection Limited meets at 7 o'clock the second Tuesday of every month at DePaula Chevrolet. And just as a reminder, if any of your club meeting places have changed, or your times or whatever, give us a call and let us know. Okay, and the reason for the, um, the fancy smancy thing here is I had surgery on my wrist. Bill did not trip me. <laughs> okay, people, welcome to the show. Um, I know I'm going to get this. Ken Marshall is on the end, and Dave Burnham is in the center. Dave is the president of the Adirondack Motor Enthusiast Club, and Ken is the uh, chief starter at the Albany Saratoga Speedway. I was. You was. Yeah. Bill lied. See, he gave me these uh, notes. He gave me a cheat okay. sheet, and he's already lied to me. No, I was, this past summer, I was the uh, race director of the Speedway. Oh, well, see, he didn't even know that. Okay. Ice racing. This is your season. That's right. It is. All right, let's start a little bit with uh, maybe the history of the club. When did you all get started? The club was formed sometime around 1954. I'm not exactly sure. Um, <laughs> it's been going on ever since. Um, and we have done summer events and winter events. And the winter events started in 1964. And that's our primary thing right now, ice races. Ice racing. Do you do with the events in the summer? The club used to have, uh, you know, hold uh, autocrosses and uh, uh, participate in other hill climbs and, and uh, with other clubs also as far as that. But, uh, the club mainly turned into an ice racing club and as far as participation to uh, uh, road uh, rallies and stuff like that. Uh, when you get done with ice racing, that, the people seem to generally, uh, that, that was it, you know. Uh, the summer enthusiastic people were where slowly the sports car people are, are mainly, uh, you know, disappearing slowly, you know, but surely because uh, it's, the sports cars today, like you used to have back in the early, uh, well, late 50s and early 60s were, were like your Alpines and BMWs right. and stuff like that. Now, now, you know, it's all changed over now. These newer cars coming and everything. So. Certainly has. So, well, anyway, well, we're, we're kind of glad that you're around for some winter events because without you guys, we, we don't really have any events to go to in the winter time, at least in the north part of the country. All right, how many people in the club? Oh, gee, our membership right now is probably about 50 people, but um, we send out newsletters to almost 200, and of those 200, probably over the course of a season, maybe 150 different people will ice race. Uh, so not all at one race usually. We'd love it if they did, but it doesn't usually happen that way. What kind yeah. of cars go ice racing? Uh, as far as the full body 
uh, cars uh, that are racing now. We've got different classes arranged for it depends how much or how fast you really want to go. You can take a stock automobile right off the road and uh, uh, put on a few safety features and go racing. What are the safety features? So, uh, well, taping up the headlights is one, uh, putting a, uh, we run a, yes, a yellow uh, lights on the back because uh, if there's a, a lot of uh, light snow out there, uh, the yellow light on the back of a car, at least you know, that cuts through it. It's a fog light. A fog it cuts light. right okay. through it. And you can tell that there's a car in front of you. It's a safety feature. You know, we experimented with it and everybody seemed to like it. So, you know, everybody's got that. Plus your regular brake lights on the back of the car. And you have to have a, a helmet fire extinguisher and um, the seatbelt. There's, there's not too much else that you really have to have. There's a lots of uh, just normal everyday cars. There are some people that drive their cars to the track and then put on their ice racing tires and type up their headlights and go racing. But the majority of people right now are um, trailering their cars to the track. What do each one of you drive? We both happen to drive the uh, A-class cars, which are the top-class cars, they're home-built. Um, they look like, uh, you know, similar to modifieds that you would find at the local stock car tracks. Okay. Um, they do not have as big of engines or anything like that, and a lot of them are front-wheel drive also. But Is that an advantage when you're ice racing? I definitely think so. I've driven both on ice, rear wheel and uh, front wheel. How about four-wheel? Uh, we don't allow for it. Don't allow? No. Why? Well, we know it would be a big advantage. And oh, just for that purpose then. Right, and... Well, why not a class for them then? Well, that is a possibility in the future. At this time, we haven't because there, most of the four-wheel drive vehicles were big and heavy, uh, like Jeeps or right, trucks. Right. Um, now there are some smaller car type uh, four-wheel drive things, which we may eventually create a class for, but we didn't want to have to make it so that to be competitive you had to have a four-wheel drive. I see. Okay. So, you know, if we ever had enough cars, we've always welcomed anybody as far as uh, whether it was from go-karts or four-wheel drives or uh, uh, amateur cars from uh, local speedways. Uh, until you ever got like, you know, ten or more cars, we'd we'll have a race for them. Right, we'd have a race for them. What, what is the fewest number that you'll have in a class? Maybe. Can you have as few as two, or as many as well, whatever what shows up? What constitutes a class, I believe, is three cars. Mm -hmm. okay. But you know, if, if there are only one or two cars um, in a particular class, we'll combine them with another class, and so they will be racing with a, a group of cars, not similar. just not just the two of them out there okay. alone. Yeah. So it would be a similar type class, if at all possible. As close as, as close well, as, as close possible. We could, but they won't be in that class. You know. Uh, racing, if they're, if we incorporated a class for that special division, like say class F, they'd be racing against cars in class C, you know, but it wouldn't be fair if they beat the class E cars either. Okay, you know, what I'd like to do, they, be, before we get into all the, the classes, because I know that's, that's going to take a little time, give me your schedule of events that's upcoming. Okay, um, we've already had two races, but the next one that's coming up is January 21st, and that's at Warner's Lake. Um, then after that, on the 27th and 28th, we go out to Jamesville Beach in Syracuse, and that's one of our tri-club races. There are three different clubs in New York State, at least that we know of, that put on ice races. Okay. And there are three weekends where we, all three clubs combine and have one big, big weekend. So the, after that is February 4th, and that's at Round Lake on February 11th. Or we'll be at Sacandaga Lake. That's also a tri club race. February 18th is a lake, um, is one of the other clubs, and we don't know which lake that one will be on. Okay. Yet. On the 25th is Warner's Lake. And then March 4th, if uh, we still have ice, we'll have an enduro race, possibly at Round Lake, but we don't know exactly where yet. Now, where do you meet at these lakes? Is there any particular section end or? Clubhouse yeah, or a usual, restaurant? Usually we go to a tavern or a restaurant or something like that. Now, um, like at, at the Second Dog Lake Race, we're going to a place called the Rocadega, which is a real nice restaurant. Oh, so, so you would meet there? We meet there, okay. and that's where the whole race would be based out of. 
um, and at our awards thing afterwards, we'd go there. Okay, what about Warner's Lake? That um, we use Schultz's Zwickel Brauer, a German restaurant. Ah, okay. <laughs> and on Round Lake, um, there's not really any facilities there, so we were searching for a place to go to afterwards. Afterwards. For that. So there's no place to sort of like stay warm during the event. <laughs> That's right. No, I'm not, not at Round Lake. I'm right. not exactly into the winter type things, but I would like to go to one of the ice races, but I just can't stay outside in the cold all day long. Well, you can bring the car right down. Yeah, yeah lots Not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, mean, I don't mind watching it and all that, but you know, I just got this thing about walking on water. Yeah. That, you know, I don't have the right kind of shoes for it. Well, you, you won't. Walk you won't oh, I know, I know. I just. Um, One thing I want to add to this is that the, also that uh, any of our races uh, are also uh, free. There's no charge to uh, come to any of these races and watch because it is on a, uh, a lake. And uh, if anybody is uh, interested in uh, uh, following the schedule of the ice races or what have you, uh, contact uh, Dave or myself. Uh, Dave's number is 875-6956. Uh, uh, or you can call me, uh, like on Saturday night before we go ahead and go race, is 885-8862. Uh, uh, give us a call Saturday nights, and we'll definitely usually know pretty much for sure what lake we're going to be at, because uh, it does change uh, due to weather conditions. Uh, uh, we might have to go to a higher altitude or something mm -hmm. like that. North. You know, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Saturday night is usually a good time to call, and uh, we're only racing Sundays this year. We changed that. Rather than run a Saturday and even spectators sure. are obviously welcome. And anybody right. who'd like to learn about it, of course, they can always come to your meetings, too. That's right. right. And it's always open to anyone who uh, want to come down and, and sit and, park and you know, just listen, see what goes on. You know, it's a regular formal meeting. And, uh, but there's always people there to give a newcomer some advice and oh, yeah. direction. Oh, okay. We help them out any way we can because we want the sport to grow. Right. And it is growing right now. Our first race this year, we had 50 cars. And Fantastic. It's been 10 years since we've had 50 cars at a race. And then the second week we had 60 cars and 80 entries. Wow. So, and then this couple, upcoming week we're expecting more because we know people that didn't show up that said we're, they were gone. Well, what you've got is basically an inexpensive way to go racing. Very. It's the cheapest way I, you know, cheapest, I mean, you can take, right. you know, you can go out and buy a, a you know, a $1,500 car. Or you can buy a $200 car. Or a $200 car, car. Yeah. or whatever. I mean, it doesn't have to be a brand new $18,000 car. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, the road racing cars are specially prepared. Right. Well, you could expect there's going, to, there's going to be some contact on it, but you know, we've really cramped down this year on it. You know, we, we've set our minds after last season with ice racing growing as fast as it is now that we had to sit down and we incorporated a, a committee as a... Uh, uh, bargaining committee and to turn any uh, protest into or anything like that to see if you can then cut down on, on, on rough riding because you do have some drivers that are like over aggressive yes. or what have you and, you know people are getting uh, their cars banged up and all that you know so a lot of people do take pride in their cars out there and, and if you, you know, bring us you bring your car that you're going to be driving in to work the next day you want to you be able, to, be able, able to drive it to work the next yeah. day all right the classes of the cars there's there's got to be a lot of them. Um, a brief idea of what kind of a car qualifies for what kind of class and why. Okay, well, class A, I'll start out with A, uh, is the top class, and basically that's, they're all home-built cars. Um, they don't really look like anything you would drive on the road. Um, and they're, uh, the engine, uh, this, the engine size goes for all cars. None, none of the engines can go any larger than 4.2 liters and uh, the cars must weigh less than 2,900 pounds. Okay, um, so are you eliminating anything? We're eliminating American all American car type? We're eliminating know, the big... Cadillac, Lincoln right. type yeah, cars? Yeah, okay. uh, wheelbase does not to exceed 110 inches. Okay. Uh, like, like uh, they said, you know, maximum curb weight of 2,900 pounds. Uh, the eight cars uh, got to weigh at least 1,000 pounds. Yeah, minimum weight. Minimum also. weight. Minimum weight, right, at least. Then, you know, because otherwise it'll get you know, a couple hundred pound cars out there. And if you give them that light, they're usually not that safe. Oh, well, that would be like a go-kart right. type thing. That too, yeah. Okay, I, you know, but can you take the go-karts out on the track or not? 
if they were to conform with the minimum weight rule and some other rules that could... Or would you create, have to create a class? Well, if they created their own class. Right. Right. Okay. So we, we Because they don't already. go 1,000 pounds for those no. things. Yeah. Right. They're only about 350 to yeah. 400 pounds, including the driver. Go all extinct. Right. <laughs> we, in fact, there was one up in the Warner's Lake there, but it was just so cold out, you couldn't even get his motor running. You're kidding. You know, for the alcohol. Oh, that's right, alcohol, right. alcohol. So, and, and also, like, you know, the maximum engine displacement on it was 257 cubic inch. That goes for all classes. We don't want to spend a bunch of money on horsepower, you know. All right, so uh, your main objective then is not speed. Well, it is, it is within the class, but it isn't an overall objective like some of the, you know, right. a Porsche 944. You're not trying to get that kind of speed out of, right. out of right. anything. Right, but they will run. They will run, yes. You hook them up, they'll go. Yes, yes, obviously. You know, I mean, I know the idea of a race is to win a race and yeah. to do what well, you can yeah. to make it run the fastest and the and the furthest, the fastest. There's four cylinders out there that will, that will go real good too. But you know, the new new cars that are coming out today, the horsepower that's getting out of four cylinders today is it's real good. Oh, I know. I have one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little automatic, but I mean, I do go down the road. There you go. I've got, I've, I've, um, I'm not sure I'd want to bring an automatic <laughs> on the ice. <laughs> well, that. It, it can work well with an automatic because in the ice you have to be very progressive with your um, acceleration. Uh, you don't want to, uh, you don't want your tires spinning all the time. So if you accelerate gradually, you'll pull away quicker. And sometimes the automatics are very progressive like that. Are they really? And it would be. I good. didn't realize that because I've done some other types of racing where you know um, it was like. An automatic will hurt you in a lot of. I ways. know. Yeah, I had. Um, I had test driven some cars in a in a um, oh standing start to you know mm -hmm. 250 feet down the road or whatever, and I beat everybody out in an automatic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean I, I should have thought about that. Okay, next class. It's the B class, and basically the B class is the next class down from the A class cars. It has to resemble a production car, even vaguely. Um, it's very highly modified. Um, they have locked differentials, um, and they can use superchargers or turbochargers. Basically, it's anything goes as long as it resembles somewhat But a it's car. still modified. Yes. It's still modified. Yeah, modified uh, class for the full body cars. That's what right. It is. Right. Well, we're all running, the Class A's are running tubular chassis instead of uh, body uh, panels or the, uh, the whole the floor unibody, the unibody okay. type deal. All ours is just made right out of two from the scratch. You know, you bolt on the A-frames yourself and everything. You know, and plus they're a lot lighter also. And then, oh, they did, yeah, all right, I can see that. Class C is um, 2,500cc and bigger front-wheel drive cars. Um, and it's uh, uh, like uh, Saab 90, 900s or 99s would race in that class, and you know bigger, bigger engine cars. All right. All stock turbo and uh, supercharged Mini Coopers and Porsches oh. 911s. Mini Coopers must do very well. Yeah. yeah. I love. I there's that's a, still that's one of my cars. to a go kart as you can get. Out right. There. There's a C car out there that probably could run you run with a modified there, that yellow one there, the yeah. 42. I mean, you going pretty good too. You know, with a full body car. There's some of them run real good out there, real good. I think Class D is our, our biggest class. Uh, we have the most entries in that class. And that that goes from 1,450 cc's up to 2,500 cc front wheel drive cars. And for rear wheel drive, it's 1,800 cc and over engines. And these are basically what, mostly people bringing their own cars That's in that right. class? That's type. right. You can have everything from Fiestas to Hondas to Volvos, Volvos to, uh, wow, there's anything. We've had Mazdas, we even had um, uh, Mercedes. Yeah, or there was uh, Chrysler K cars and oh, yeah, all kinds of, kind of stuff out yeah. there the last couple of weeks. <laughs> you know? and, and basically, if you have a car that weighs less than 2,900 pounds, we have a class. We have a class. <laughs> The, the smallest class is the E-Class, and that's any front-wheel drive with an engine up to 1,450 cc's. So that's some small Hondas, um, Fiat's, Yugos. You can get those pretty cheap now. Yes, you can. <laughs> you mean they go forward? 
Oh, yeah. yeah. We oh, I know a Yugo that didn't go backwards. They didn't mm -hmm. tell them. People had rented a Yugo, and then they couldn't get the car into reverse gear. So wherever they parked, they had to make sure they always, you know, really? yeah. had their car facing out so that they could get going in. Yeah, I think they would be a pretty good car right now because they weigh, they weigh very little and they have a, you know, a pretty potent little engine for, you know, I've seen good. a few of them. They don't really look all that bad. It's just, um, the part, I guess they... Perfect car for Well, you can buy a 1987 right now for about $400, yeah. so. <laughs> there you go. There's your there's your perfect ice racing car. Okay. Yeah. What about you said before about um, ice racing tires? You put your ice racing tires on. What kind of special tires should people? That is where it all lies, right there. All the uh, money tire is there. preparation. Uh, that is very important as far as ice racing. Uh, studded tires or no? Pardon? Yes. Studded tires. Uh, you, we have. You can run studded tires. We allow. If you're going to run studs, which is the uh, carbide uh, right. uh, max track stud. Uh, you are, you're allowed 22 of them per foot on a tire. You know, That's around it. Around. around uh, so a foot, 22 studs per foot. Uh, okay, we're, I got you. we're running screws from the inside out, a number 12 sheet metal screw, and they only can stick up 3 sixteenths. We're allowed, we're only allowing 18 per foot. Why the difference? Because uh, the screws work better than the right. studs. Ah. So we try to even it out so if people want to use studs that they can. Do people not, do people do not use studs? Oh boy, that didn't come out right. Are there people that drive without the studs? Mm, not really. Not no. really. No. You no. need the grip. I right. checked a few cars up at Crowley Lake last week. There were some with studs in them, but uh, even with my opinion, they were running with their, their carbide studs, uh, which is the carbide tips that make, you know, contact with, uh, with the pavement. They go in. You see, and, uh, it's hard to get a hold of these maxi track studs, which are a solid steel stud. And if you get a hold of some of them and plant them right in the tire, they'll work pretty good. That's why, you know, we allowed up to 22. If you go any more than that, then, you know, we'll probably be all going back to studs again. So so you, you, your biggest cost is going to be your tires? Because well, obviously you're not going to use those tires on the street. That's also, right. No, you know, screws. You could and on all four tires? You can, but you can. on a front wheel drive car, you only need them in the front I won't run screw tires in the back because you, you get too much of a bite in the back and you always wind up with a bad uh, uh, push. Oh, really? Right. You got, that's how you set up the handle of your car, front wheel drive cars, how many, uh, like I run studs in the back, and I'll run like, I got tires made up with 80, 100, 120, depends, you know, what kind of course you run, how many left-handers, how many right-handers you run, how much you want the back end to come around and set, set the car up. With All right, what does the course car. look like? I know it's hard to kind of, you know, there, describe it here, but do you have a straight yeah. line? Do you have well, S's you, in it or? Yeah, we yeah. do. We have S's. We have, we'll usually have a straightaway, you know, a fairly long straightaway and then a long sweeper. Um, it's a, you know, it's a road course. A road course, that's right. How big of a course is it generally? Anywhere from a mile to a mile and a half. That big? Oh, yeah. Wow. Whatever we feel like plowing on the lake you know, or can Who plow. plows the lake? Uh, we do. You do? Mm -hmm. Or anybody we can get. <laughs> How thick is the ice? We won't go out with less than 12 inches. Right now, there's a... Uh, Even with all that weight and all those cars running, the ice doesn't... Auto vehicles, campers, everything. It, it doesn't disintegrate, oh, and no. it doesn't, you know... That's why we won't go out there with less than a foot. Right. It's very strong if you have a foot. Right yeah. now, there's at least 16 inches on most legs. Well, we had a very cold December for you, yeah. so that, that throws everything up. Yeah. Last winter, you probably had to go almost up to the North Country. Right. Yeah, we were just, we were at the minimum almost all of last year, 12 inches just about everywhere. That was terrible last year. We never got to run uh, last year because it never made enough ice there. So how much further north can you go up in New York State or whatever? Do you go into well, Vermont or anything? Yeah. We, it depends on who would set up a race. We've run as far north as uh, Shazy Lake up in Plattsburgh. Um, but we do have people up in Peru that come down and race with us every week, and they're checking in places all the time up there. Up in uh, I'll say well, Forks, there's I believe a place up there that he wants to come up there and run. But we told you know our schedule is pretty much set right now. But uh, uh, at the beginning of March, according to the weather, you know we might have to go north if we want. Somebody's okay. Now, how much of a um, detriment is this couple of days of warm weather that we have here? And then the possibility of rain. It's going up supposedly to the 50s by Thursday. You know, yeah. um, how detrimental is that? 
if it's close to the weekend, it can really hurt. Now, if it if it, all the rain stops by like Thursday and it gets cold Friday and Saturday, it'll be fine. Uh, you can it'll freeze up, you know, a couple inches. If the water. nights are cold enough, That's it'll right. help to keep. And it. the sun is so low right now that um, you know we're only getting about eight hours, or nine hours of sunlight. So it's uh, you know well, that that helps make ice. <laughs> okay, just give us a quick. Um, schedule again of, of okay. where you're going to be. January 21st, Warner's Lake. Uh, January 27 and 8th, we'll be in Syracuse at Jamesville Beach. February 4th is Round Lake. February 11th, Sacandaga Lake. February 18th uh, is still undecided. The 25th is Warner's Lake. And March 4th and the one after that are still undecided yet. You have to call us to find out where. All right, now do you keep a, like a running tally of all the people who enter for a end oh, of the yes. year championship type thing? Oh, definitely. Is that what you do? Yes. You're going to have a tri club championship, you have a class championship, plus you have your finale champion. How many women drive? Quite about eight, eight to ten women right, right out there now. We'd love to have a lot yeah. more. Well, um, not this year. Come on out. Uh, I think I'll try. I think I'm going to keep it in mind for next year because what I want to do is go karts and ice racing. But I want to have some place to go where I can warm up to and, and get out of the cold because I went ice racing one time and it was just like standing out there all day long because they didn't have an enclosed area for us to go into. If you're hyped up to to race, believe me, you got to stay warm to to go race. You don't even feel the cold. It's like we drive these open window cars and uh, you know. We dress for it, but once you're out there racing, you don't realize how cold it is. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it since 76. And how long have you been doing it? 82. You look like you enjoy it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's very. It's one of the safe sports also. I'm uh, born and raised in the stock car racing game. Like okay. I said, my father raced for numerous of years, and uh, it was... Uh, you know, bored to sit home all winter long and just waiting for April to come around again, waiting for the racetracks to open up. So I went to a couple of races and watched a couple of times, and I I started in the club uh, first doing the flag. Wow. You know, doing it, just standing there, but that was getting kind of cold off, so you know, I said, heck with this, I want to have some fun too. So I went out and I started, to watch. I started yeah. a little 67 Ford Mustang. We have about a half a minute left. Dave, phone number again? 875-6956. Ken? Mine is 885-8862. And please, whatever you do, show up at their events because they really like to see you out there. And if you decide that you want to go and have a good time, get in your car and go ice racing. And as always, remember to keep your hands on the steering wheel. Hi, this is Marsha Kane and welcome to the steering wheel. As you can see, we are bundled up against this terribly cold weather, which I absolutely and totally despise. It's the 1st of February, it's Groundhog Day, and it is also the day that Daytona is running, the 24 hours. And honest to God, I would rather be down there in this 70 degree weather than out here triple, quadruple layered freezing my buns off and my toes and my fingers. I borrowed a glove, the Michael Jackson look-alike contest. Can't get gloves on the other hand. We had surgery on the other hand. One hand is totally frozen. Everything is numb. And we've got 50 to 60 participants out here on Round Lake doing their ice racing thing. And this ice racing is through the courtesy of AMAC, the Adirondack Motor Enthusiast Club. We've had these guys in the studio several times over the last few years, and I've never made it out to a nice race because, as you all know, I love 80 degrees. I don't like 20 degrees. Bill is going to be running in the media race. Keith Ruggiero is going to be doing the cameras for us, and uh, we're going to have a co-host in a little while. 
In the meantime, Keith is going to take a look at some of the cars out in the background there for you, so you can see some of the cars that uh, do show up for ice racing. Now, they tell me the ice is um, 12 to 14 inches thick. I don't believe it. I don't like walking on water. I'd rather be on dry land. Such as it is, we're going to have five or six races today. Keith and I are going to try and get the, um, the first race in for you, and then we're going to cover the media race that uh, Bill's going to be in in a little while. Carl Burnham is going to join us after he gets done with his race, which will be the first one today. And I think that um, it really isn't all that bad out here. It, when the wind kicks up, it's cold. But what can you do? This is winter time. Not my most favorite time of the year. Never has been, never will be. And I really want to thank all these guys from AMAC and all the participants for showing up and loaning their cars to uh, several of the media guys. And we're going to try and meet each one of the people that's in this celebrity event in a little while. Of course, naturally, it figures they're going to hold that celebrity race like maybe two or three hours down the road from now. But we also want to thank the people that are here supplying us with hot coffee, hot cocoa, hot tea, hot dogs, and hamburgers. Now, I think some of the cars might be getting out there shortly to line up for their first race. Um, I'm not sure if Keith got a picture of that nice 1600 BMW. If he didn't, he'll turn around and he'll look at it. And it's over to his right. And in that car is our very good friend, Al Duval, who is one of Schenectady's finest. Al's been involved with ice racing, I don't know, for as long as I can remember. He does the flagging. We're going to be out here in the middle of all this, so we're going to be out here for at least 20 minutes while the first race is going on. Lots of fun, lots of fun. There's also going on on the ice. We saw some ice fishermen come in a little while ago. We see some ski mobiles. I've seen some kids on bicycles. Um, what else? We've got Killer Kane in the background over there. He's walking in on us. And um, hey, Al. Maybe we can get Al to say hello to us while it isn't busy. Hi. Al Duvall, how, you doing? how are you? Okay. Thank you. You set up a nice course? Uh, it's quick in some spots and tight enough to satisfy everybody. Uh, I know. think so. We watched him doing practice and there was a lot of whiteouts out there. A lot of guys hate me. Uh, yeah, but everybody really loves you. There's a fine line between love and hate, you know yeah, that? Yeah. And they'll hate you today, but they'll love you later when they win their trophies. <laughs> Harold going by there. They must have done something right because they elected me president next year. So okay. <laughs> we gotta go for it. That's right? what it's gonna be. We're yeah. gonna be out here with you during the uh, during this race. That's good. And then we'll come back out during the media race and bother you. Yeah. All right. Bill's so gonna, gonna drive the media, right? Media's got, Bill's gonna drive the media All race. Right. And uh, he's looking forward to it. Yeah. We'll um, see where he goes. <laughs> let's see if he can stay on course. Yeah. We've heard rumors about. Maybe I'll have to him. black flag him. Do you think? Do you think he'll hit any pylons? Mm. Mm. We have to come in talk to him for a minute. Huh? Hey, that might not be a bad <laughs> idea. He's, he's had that happen to him before. I believe that happened to him at either Daytona or Sebring. They called him in yeah. and said, now Billy. <laughs> we'll watch him. We'll watch him. Keep your eye on him because I think yeah. you got a ringer in here. <laughs> oh, which one he's driving today? No, no. Uh, yeah, he's driving number 12. 12? Yeah. Okay. Fiesta? Yes. Yeah. The Ford. Yeah. It's good. It's a good yeah. car. We saw that car going in practice. It's still running, so <laughs> we're all set. <laughs> And we have a lot of, maybe you can give me a couple of thanks to some of the people who helped put this on. Oh, there's too well, many to mention. Fine. Too many to too mention. Many. Oh, man, I'll tell you, there's just about a bunch of people that come around, and every every week uh, it's the same group of people that help set up the cars. All these guys that you see behind us here, yeah. they're all volunteers. Uh, people go out and, and set up getting the trailer, Kenny Marshall, and and the Dave Burnham. Uh, there's, two, there's many, many it's other people. Yep. Dave's wife. Uh, lots of people, lots. Well, we always yeah. thank everybody that we can, yeah. and we thank if you. I, if I started naming everybody, I'd forget everybody, you know? Yeah. All right, we'll say thank you to yeah. everyone who showed up. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. That's for sure. It helps make this event go like it does. And about what's the time frame now for well, the first race? We're running race? a little, little uh, late, so we got to get the media guys out here for some practice. That's how Cameron. Yeah, you know, I guess he didn't get. Uh, I guess he didn't get any practice for one reason or another, and he's helping us uh, set something up in there. So we gave him a couple laps. Hal's pretty fast too, huh? Yeah. You're not running today then? No, no. no. I uh, plan on building a car next year, uh, class A car, tube frame BMW. Oh. 
All right. It'll be BMW, rear engine video, BMW. Maybe we ought to talk to BMW about getting you some national sponsorship. For sure. This, this, hey? There we All go. All right. We got contacts in the right places. It's going to be BMW. a BMW 2002 plus one. Plus one. Yeah. What's the plus one mean? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. All right, listen, we're going to just um, sign off on here and wait for the guys to get set yeah. up for this race, and then we're going to... Yeah, um, in a couple minutes, I think. To get them going. Are they lining up yet? I don't yeah. even I hope. see them lining up yet. They're a little slow today. Yeah. They were late coming in, though. Well, we gave the guys a pretty good practice session, so they probably want to stay and uh, fix up their cars, make sure they're going to be topped off and uh, ready to go for the first race, rather than uh, send everybody out here... Uh, Half gas, shall we say? Half gas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Al. <laughs> okay, uh, Keith. How about we just shut down for a few minutes, and then we will uh, be back to you as soon as this uh, first event gets under. All right, start it. We're getting prepared to have our first race underway. Big Al Duvall standing out there with the green flag and the yellow flag in preparation for the first lap of the first race on the ice in the cold. Okay, he's giving them the go ahead sign. He's going to give them one lap around, make sure they all stay in line as with any race. Pretty big class. Sorry to say that I don't know a lot of the race car drivers. We do know a couple of them, but we don't know a lot of them because these are a lot of guys that just a lot of the times just show up just for race racing. And okay. All right, we just got instructions to go stand on the outside of the track. So while they're doing their first pace lap, we're going to walk over here where it's going to be less snowy, less white out. Okay, we got that bell 30 feet. Yeah, we're going out here in, in La La Land. It's cool no, no. out here today. A little bit of wind blowing, but not too much. We haven't been to the ice races in a long time, have we, Marcia? No, we've never been, have we, Bill? <laughs> Bill's been. Marsha hasn't been, and Al said 30 feet, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it 40 just for the hell of it. <laughs> okay, now it looks pretty safe, and if Keith wants to turn around and watch those cars coming way out in the hinterlands, they're doing their pace lap. It's going to get a little noisy, obviously, because these cars are really all souped up for the for the races also. Yeah, they've got all kind here today. You've got Pintos, you've got uh, Toyotas, you've got Saabs, you've got some Volkswagens, a lot of Volkswagen rabbits, and uh, looks like it should be a great, interesting day. Okay, I'm going to kind of help have you kind of keep track of who's who's in first, or not who's on first, but who's Volkswagen. in first for me, because there's only one car out there that I know the driver to, and that's the um, 04 car. Okay. And that is the uh, the O'Connors. Oh, okay, yeah. KG from from, from Voorheesville. Yeah. Here they come. Here they come. They're slowing them down out there now. Just like slowing them down. Just slowing like the regular down. guys. Yeah, yep. just like the regular guys. And of course, I found out that you know how you qualify? You get here early. Oh, and you okay. Sign up. You sign that's up. whoever gets here first. Oh, gets that's, closest that's, to the, that's great. To well, the front here, row. Here they're coming up to the line now. Okay. Just, just like a NASCAR race, slow. Except we don't have a pace car. Whoops! Somebody spun out already before it even started. All right, they're on their way. Oh yes, looking good. Keith, if you look over this way, we got two guys off the road. It looks like out there. Yeah. I think if Keith will swing around here, we can get over to the hinterlands here and get some far-fetched stuff way over in the in the in the snow mist there. Okay, what we're going to be able to see is they come down through this um, first area, basically in front of us. The next time they come around, will be there's a uh, fairly long straight. Then they go into a chicane, and then they go into what looks like Big Bend at Lime Rock. Yeah, it does look like it. You know, we'll know in a little while, but uh, it looks like an interesting course. It's uh, 1.4 miles, but... Uh, we got some more trouble over here. Straight ahead, Keith, to your left. 
All right, everybody. Nope, one guy didn't make it out there. I can't tell the number, but we got a yellow flag out there. We got somebody off the road down there. <laughs> this is part of the fun of ice racing, is that when they're not running close together, you can't hit anybody. No, and they're having, having to contend with the snow mist, too. A whiteout is a lot different than, uh, you know, dirt, you and know, rain. Uh, and rain, yeah. But uh, uh, this, these whiteouts are something else. Uh, this, whoever's in the lead here, I don't know who it is, but you can see the snow mist in the background. It's very difficult for some of the drivers to see, but... Uh, the one who's in front uh, has got it made because he, he shows the way, and he's, he's doing it to it. Yeah. Number 60. Very good. We'll see if he makes it around first of yeah. next time. All right. Yeah. And here comes 04. There he's in second place. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah, you oh, this see. guy's got a couple of pylons under his yeah. car. He should have been black flagged. Yeah, oh, Honda car collected a couple of pylons. <laughs> This, is, this uh, guy's got his windshield wipers going. I don't know if that helps in a whiteout or not. Well, well no. They all do, I guess, yeah. don't they? Well, another thing here, you got to contend with the sun. You know, combine the sun with, uh, with all this snow mist, and uh, oh boy, you know, away we go. Here comes the guy who uh, had the first before the start, uh, what do you want to call it, little altercation. <laughs> confrontation we could have said confrontation out in the parking lot but this is the big parking lot you know I keeps over there in the background there and he's seeing everybody on the back that gentleman who's in the in the lead there he's got to build up a pretty good lead and uh, this is not you know I, I would have thought by now most of the snow would have disappeared from the track you know it like blows up it has no place to go but no settle back to, down it settles back down yeah and it is, uh, it, it's, it's interesting. It's, 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 this is educational and a cheap way to go racing. Uh, I should say cheap, inexpensive, fairly inexpensive, you know. But it's uh, quite educational. If anybody's going to go into uh, any type while road racing or over racing, uh, this gives you a good idea on uh, what to do in case of sliding, you know. Oh, we lost 04 somewhere. Oh, there he is. He lost a couple places. Yeah, a couple places, yeah. Oops, somebody's pulling into oh, the pit. He's the one with the pylons underneath his car. And he's being black flagged for that because if you hit the pylons, you're black flagged. Yeah. Pylons are expensive. Yeah. Well, not only the expensive, it's a danger because uh, he can't get them off of his car. There you go. Oh, it was only one big pylon. Okay. It wasn't even a little one. It was a big pylon. Good going there, guy. <laughs> yeah, all right. Here, yeah, oldest sobs making up a lot of time. Whoa, all right. He has to make up a lot of time. He came by uh, the first lap and his door wasn't closed, so he had to even stop and close his door. I think somebody, no, nobody was around. I was going to say maybe he got his bl doors blown off. <laughs> <laughs> no, he. I think his door flew open. I can remember the time we were at Lime Rock years ago and there was a Lotus and somebody actually did blow his doors off. His literally, door, yes. literally, yeah. Because yeah. I had almost had a picture of it. It's yeah. when I was first learning how to run a 35 millimeter camera and I was learning how to pan it and I forgot to move the camera and the car went by and I got beautiful scenery. <laughs> oh, well, those things happen. Yeah, that's a tremendous lead he's built up there. Oh, yeah. there he goes. No, yeah. he's all right. He's, uh, I thought he was going to go off, but that chicane is... The chicane on the ice is definitely misleading because what you want to do is you want to slide into it so you can slide out of it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know with a lead like that, uh, you shouldn't get carried away. You should uh, just uh, take your time, do the best you can, and uh, keep it on the course. I was going to say keep it on the pavement, but keep it on... <laughs> keep it on the ice. <laughs> yeah, keep it in between the pylons. Oh, there goes number 12. Oh, all right. Uh. And if... And then one of the times by, if Keith gets a picture of that number 12 car, that's the one that Bill will be riding in the media race later on today. Yeah, there's about, I thought there's going to be about 12 of us. I guess there's around six or eight of us, so should be fun. You know, I'm just out to have a good time. And, uh, but some of these folks are real, real serious oh, about their Oh, there goes your sob. Yeah. A little bit, oh, you know, it always looks like they're going to really slide off, but I guess they don't. It's just the way the, uh... They're not studded tires, but the, the tires have uh, screws in them. Yeah, they got okay. s screws in them. And uh, oops, somebody just said, well, he's had it. He went right directly to the pits. 
<laughs> We've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's no actual pit entrance here, but... Uh, yeah, I think we're standing in it. <laughs> yeah, we might be standing in here. Uh, the official one, anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, we, uh, Standing out here, you still have to keep your eyes open because these cars will slide around. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm not nearly as scared as I was that time we went to um, the, 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 yeah. No, the yeah the sprint car races when we were out in the middle of that thing with these Chagamungas cars flying at us on a third of a mile track. Six, seven hundred horsepower. These are that don't they don't have that much horsepower here today. When it, what it is, it's power to the ice. Yes. Yeah, if you haven't tried ice racing, uh, folks, you should uh, sort of get into it, you know, buy yourself an inexpensive piece of equipment and put the safety stuff in it and uh, go for it. You know, and it really, there's an awful lot of people who do have older cars parked in their backyards that they would be perfect for because if your car is full of rust, it doesn't matter. Oh, it really doesn't matter so long as the struts and all of the, you, you know. you got to have the safety the features, safety features yeah, in it, but yeah. I mean, there's an awful lot of cars here that by looking at the outside of it, you wouldn't know that it was an ice racing car. Oh, no, no. Some of them look pretty, pretty neat. And they're, they all, another good thing they, that makes them look good, they've got the advertisers on there. they got a couple of sponsors, you know, that might buy the uh, gas for them or something. So, like I said, or the tires. Or the tires. Yeah, the tires, uh, you don't really need new ones because you screw screws into them. And, uh, and uh, you know, still, if you've got a sponsor on there, give them a little little uh, advertising, uh, not for that much, you know, maybe $100 or so for the season, maybe more. You know, it depends on how serious you want to be. Yeah, and these races are either are usually around 20 minutes. And I'll tell you, it's probably a lot warmer in the cars with all the adrenaline flowing than it is standing out here watching it. Yeah. Looks like everybody's more or less settled down. Uh, we've got a bunch of folks going into this first turn here, you know, which is a Lulu. <laughs> no, we've got to keep an eye on them and see how they're doing down there because uh, you learn by watching the racers going around on the track also because you can... You, you, you see how some other driver handles a corner or a turn or even the straightaway where they drive on it. Oh, we got a little little confrontation down in the corner there. Okay. Uh, key start right, right down in the corner there. All right. Oh, there, there goes another one. Oh, yellow, yellow flag is out and everybody's boring right in there. And they, well, luckily, they, you know, they got a lot of places to go. They can go off course and not hurt anything. That's another good thing about ice racing. You don't have trees and stuff like that to run into that we do on road racing, you know. Uh, so you can go off course here and uh, not worry about anything. Just keep going for a mile or so. As long as you don't take the pylon with you, because then you will be black flagged if you do something silly like hit a pylon, yeah. which I suppose... Have we got audio? Okay. We got audio. Well, okay. Pylons tend to move those... Uh, you know, Amco and all that stuff, that don't seem, seem to move. Well, I think, uh, what, what do you think? We ought to give a break here because it's going to go on for a while? Yeah. Why don't we come back towards the finish of this race and we'll let you know how this one winds up because they're going to be running out here for at least another 10 minutes. Okay, folks, I know we came back out here to show you the end of the other race, but it, we were absolutely so frozen cold that we didn't quite make it. We will tell you that number 60 did win, but what we wanted to show you was um, the next race or some of the cars in it because this is a, a modified race. 
And some of these people take the racing a little bit more seriously because they go and they build their own ice racing cars with the special wing effect on them, as you can see on a lot of the cars as they go by. And you have to wait a couple seconds. The course is kind of long here, but they get better aerodynamics than a, a standard street car would get, which means they're going to go a little bit faster. They probably handle a lot better. And if you don't see anything that looks totally modified, that still not may be the case. Uh, there's probably some engine modifications rather than just a standard stock street car. Boy, try saying that three times fast. <laughs> Get all the words in. We got some white out down at the other end there. Somebody a little sideways. But again, part of the fun of this is unless you're traveling in a serious pack, you're only going to go sliding on some more ice, and there is a ton of it, and standing on it is terribly cold. Before we get too far along, I do want to tell you that I think that these guys that show up every week are great. They have a lot of fun. I don't think I'm going to be back. <laughs> this is out of my league. I like it 80 degrees and above. And this is just much too cold. Bill, what do you think? Bill's back doing the camera work for us for a while while Keith takes a rest and warms up his hands. What do you think of these guys? They're all right. You know, it's a, a lot of a lot of modifieds out here that are going quite well. Uh, we saw Ken Marshall in there, that purple car with Harold Cameron. Uh, Ken, by the way, is a uh, starter uh, Albany, Saratoga, and sometimes Lebanon Valley. So he's right into it, but it's a little cool out here today. Now it's a lot cool. Yeah, the wind chill factor, I don't know, wind's blowing pretty good right now. And uh, I don't know, it was 13 degrees this morning, so we haven't figured out the wind chill factor. But they got to be brave souls. Okay. Well, just to give you an idea, there, there's another race that's going to be running. I'm not sure which class that is, because um, what we were told is they have A, B, C, D, and E for classes which I guess keeps it simple. And I'm sure that it has to do with the car and the modifications to it and the size of the car as to what class that they're in. And sometimes they will even have a junior class for the younger drivers. And the younger drivers can be, I believe, 16 in, um, in some of the clubs. Gonna have to kind of like check it out so if any of you kids out there would like to get an idea of how your car really handles, one good way to learn is on the ice. Because what you're doing is just simulating a lot of road conditions that you're going to find, wet weather, snow on the road, ice on the roads, what you can do and what you can't do, and what your car will do and what your car won't do. And even though they don't use studs on the cars anymore, they do use the screws, but they have all sorts of rules and regulations for the screws also as far as how long they can be and how many they can have per foot. There's a whole, there really aren't a whole heap of a lot of rules and regulations for the ice racing as there is in, say, NASCAR. But it does, it does provide the safety precautions that are needed to keep, to keep everybody having fun and having a good time, which we think all races should be. Right, Bill? That's right. All right. Bill's busy watching the, the cars going by. All right. We see one guy being pulled into the pits. He's being black flagged over there by the start-finish line. And that was probably because he ran over a pylon. And that's what happens. There, the penalty is you stay on course. Yeah, that's true. Well, what do you think? Uh, it's getting a little breezy out here. Yeah, it's getting a little bit breezy, so what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll show you the next class. Hi, everyone. We're back again with our second place finisher in the last race that we went and caught about three and a half minutes of. Every race that we go out there, I stand out there shorter and shorter. It gets colder and colder. Ken Marshall? Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. We were, uh, had to lead there, but uh, they wanted me to come in, and uh, I okay. guess I hit a pylon out there. Yeah. So, well, it's, you know, he's part of the game, and uh, I'm, yeah. I'm happy with second. 
did very well out there. Uh, we're trying to tell the folks out there that what uh, we saw out there in the last race was some modified cars, which are basically home built with some wings on them and some more power in them, and they're going to go a little faster, right? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's a lot more work. They're a lot more fragile, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, coming into the tire game right now, and. Uh, I hope we can correct that problem though next year. You know, as far as uh, the tire wear is getting real bad. Uh, right. Well, because you're putting, you're getting a horsepower to the ground now. Oh, what it is, okay. and that's why we are moving out there as fast as we are. What are speeds out there? Well, that I don't know. I don't have a speedometer out there. Uh, I was told that I turned a, a, a lap in a minute 16. So that's not bad. So I think that's I, fast. About 1.4 mile course, I believe. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, you're moving so, out there. You're, you are. You know, and you feel it, but, uh, you know, you're not winning unless you beat the guy in front of you, so that's you got to go true. faster. You always got to stay in front. What is it like in that uh, whiteout? Well, that's, that's, uh, oh, yeah, definitely tricky. Uh, you hope, like, heck, nobody's sitting sideways in front of you. You know, you can't stop. You can maybe let off a little bit. You know, hopefully maybe the sight will come back, and then uh, you can get going again. But you do have lights on the back of the cars. I've noticed that. Yes, we do run at a yellow fog light back there for the purpose of a whiteout. So you can uh, see the car in front of you yet, Somewhere. you know. He's somewhere's <laughs> Somewhere out in there, front of you. right? What is it? Everybody's going into that first chicane, and what is the idea to slide through that so that you can slide out of it? Well, no, That's you gotta. What I think a lot of guys doing. You can come in it pretty good, but you gotta really slow down in the first one because then you got a sharp right hander right after it. Okay. So you can't really go in it too fast. It's basically a good slow down turn because then you got a real sharp right hander to come back almost in the opposite direction right after that. So. So it's more of a hairpin than a big bend? Uh, it's a chicane a into chicane. a hairpin, yes. Into a hairpin. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you got a crew here to help you? I sure do. I got uh, yeah. Aldi Carlo here. He's been with me for numerous years, and uh, he's with me all week in the garage, helped me on the car. Uh, we put in a real good week this week. I mean, every night out there at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, Ronnie Proctor comes down and gives me a hand once in a while. And, uh, of course, I got to say something about these guys right here. If I wasn't... Move out of the way? If it wasn't for them... I would definitely not be here, you know, because uh, they've been Mention, mention names. It's Park Tire, okay. and right down in Clifton Park, and like I said, I, Al, he couldn't do enough for me, and when I, you know, gets into the tire game now, and he's the big accent of, of it, you know. Okay, so now, what, how many races uh, do you try to have during the season? We start usually the first weekend in January right into March, as long as we still have ice, right into, uh, sometimes we've raced right into, like, the second weekend of March. But, this is uh, the first time you've really had some good serious ice in a long time, too, isn't it? Well, we've raced uh, this you, our third you have weekend. to go north. Right. right. We raced up at Corogo once, and we were here last week, and then we're here again this week. So, uh, uh, you know, the ice conditions are good. It's a little bit chilly, I know, for you summer people, <laughs> but uh, for us ice racers, this is ideal conditions. See, I, those, those, these folks know me. They know I'm not going to be back, and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Bill today because I do warm weather. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's not like yeah. that summertime racing. No, it isn't. Nothing like it. <laughs> Tell me, um, you're, there's five classes, I understand, A, B, C, D, and E, yeah. basically. And, um, all right, you're a modified car, but there were some cars out there that did not look modified. But whether I made the statement right or wrong, I said that some of the cars may not look like they're modified, but the engine probably is. Uh, definitely. Okay. Uh, your B class is your stock full body cars. They can do a little chopping on the cars. Do you have combined classes in your race? Uh, no, no, you're running, I'm running for, for A, okay. A class points when I'm out there, but they put two other classes in to make a field. Oh, I see. You see, A, B, and C. Okay. But, uh, uh, it, plus it gets the races off a little quicker, too, like they ran D and E first. Okay. You see, your lower classes. Then you get into the finale, and everybody's out there together. And then it gets really hairy because uh, you got E class and D class cars out there. And they're slower. Well, well they're definitely slower because they're heavier, and, and you know less cubic basically. inch, yeah. right? And stock cars right off the right off the highway. You know, it's a good cheap form of wheel to wheel racing. So, if they were going, if someone was going to go ice racing and they wanted to bring in a car, could they just go out to a, like say, a junkyard, and pick oh, up a definitely, car? Definitely, definitely. And then. Uh, would they be able to take the interior out, or would they leave it in? They or can leave. Choice? They can take all the interior out of it. Uh, I suggest leaving in the heater. Uh, yeah, your windshield wipers. Uh, you can take everything out of it and make it light as you can, and uh, you know, put in a good racing seat with a good uh, five-point harness. Uh, roll cage is recommended, but it's not necessary. You know, you don't have to have it. Uh, and then you know, put on a set of studded tires. Knock out the lights if you want. You can leave the lights in. Uh, 
We do. Right. We, we do have a couple that drove right down. Yeah, that's what you I'm know, say. Yeah. that you know, just tape up the headlights, put a fire extinguisher in it. You got a good seat belt, uh, uh, five point harness, and uh, you can go racing really. And you don't mind the cold? No. 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 Oh, another one that doesn't mind the cold. <laughs> How do you keep warm all day long? I mean. Well, well, you, there's got to be a trick somewhere. There is. Uh, Tell me quick. <laughs> it's Well, having a lot of, uh, not a lot, but having a good two to three layers of loose clothing. Okay. Not real tight, because then you've you're, you got to have that expansion yeah. in between your uh, clothing. Like this right here, I got on a regular snowmobile suit. Then I just got, you know, a regular insulated shirt with long johns. So okay. it's a... Uh, it, it keeps you warm. Plus, once you're out there working with the car and you forget all about the cold, then you break out in a sweat. All right, so I have four layers of clothes on, including my coat. So they're all loose, so I should be okay. And basically, I'm not cold from the neck to my knees. It's just your feet and your hands. Just my feet and my right. hands, and I, you know, right. had to cover up a good pair head. of boots and a good pair of gloves, and a hat is strongly recommended yeah. because once you get your hands and feet get cold, you're basically done. I know I am. No, well, I think part of my problem today is I'm wearing sort of like dress boots. Uh, right. We're not dressed up out here for a fashion show. You're dressed no, no, to be yeah, warm. I know, but you go with what you got, too. Oh, well, yeah. I'm going to go buy a pair of boots just for this. <laughs> <laughs> you got any kids here helping you today that you'd like to introduce us yes, to? Yes, I got my daughter, Karen, here and stepson, Ryan, and uh, they, they're helping clean off the car and stuff. Yeah. Clean cars go faster. Well, I hope so. <laughs> now you're going to be out there again for another race at the end, we right? we got another class race, and then we have another finale. Okay, so everybody who wants to is out in the finale? Oh, yeah. Everybody that's still able and running, uh, uh, it's, uh, every class for overall position plus your class points. Now, isn't that a little unfair? Don't you think that some of the cars like yours are going to win those? Well, it's still a class race. You see? Oh, so it's a class within class. It's right. Okay. It's two races actually in one. Okay. You know, but uh, they run a finale. That's everybody together. And then usually the last race of the year that we run is a two-hour finale. Where does that planning on being? Uh, yeah, we don't have a definite date set for it yet. But it's usually, like I said, beginning of March, second weekend of March. Here or uh, Cryoga, or you don't know yet? We don't know yet. You got to go where the ice uh, is. In fact, I think it's going to be the. Uh, uh, New York State Ice Racing Association's okay. event this year because we did have it last year. Okay. We switch every year on that. All right. Well, we're going to wish you a lot of fun. How well, about that? And a lot of luck and good run for the points this year. Uh, we're hoping to stay up there. And, you know, as long as we can finish races this year, I'll be happy. Oh, anybody who finishes is always happy. Exactly. I just wish, my, my wish list for today is to be at Daytona where it's 70 degrees and they're running a nice, nice race down there. be there next week, right? Daytona? Yeah, yeah it's today. Oh. Daytona, they're running today? The 24 hours. Oh, 24 hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. The NASCAR uh, 500 is the fifth next day, week or two weeks later. Right, that's what I thought you'd be going down for. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to go down for it. We're going to park ourselves in front of the old boob tube and uh, get front row Okay, get the popcorn out, Jim. <laughs> All right, Bill. Uh, what we got to do is we're going to go back to the car. We're going to let Bill warm up because the next race is his. He's in the media race. And... Uh, Keith and I are going to be out there with the camera oh, and the boy. microphone and uh, Carl and Dave, and we're going to um, cheer these guys on. Well, that's what you're here to have is have fun, and uh, it looks like everybody's having fun today, so I hope you enjoy yourself. 